I hate moving average stops except in this scenario. How the 20 is not relevant, this is probably the A. You're not waiting for a minute in this case. Remember, when you're buying above something, there's no waiting. That we use off the open relevant. It's only relevant for the open. It loses its relevance as we start to build today's data. Any clearing event coming from this tight apex of the wedge any clearing event is an absolute trick take it's very appropriate in this market environment because it's one of the easiest money making events out there as i explained to you we take a look at jpm this is the ultimate violent scenario that i love the violent drop right into support and the ultimate support is the 200 Right now, naturally, many people might be afraid of the 200 being support, but they shouldn't because violence weakens. The violent drop into the 200 weakens the support foundation of the 200. And even if there's a bounce, that bounce is usually short-lived. In fact, the bounce is so short-lived that it's often an, a, an amazing ad opportunity. So the, the, the quintessential way you play violence is to get into the violent bar. Even if you're getting into the violent bar late, it's still worth getting into it, even if you're getting into it late. Now, why? Because while I would be looking to add on a bounce to get more gains out of this, 50% don't bounce and 50% bounce. So 50% bounce and give you an opportunity to add. The other 50% don't bounce and go straight down from violence. And so that's what we had this morning from JPM. No bounce whatsoever from the violent bar. And so this is why when you spot violence, it's crucial that you get into the bar no matter how late it is. Now, you might have to get in light. If that bar is tall, you want to be able to survive a bounce. So you might have to do this one lot instead of two if the bar is too tall. Otherwise, get in normally and look to add on a bounce. All right, but the last thing you want to do is get stopped out here because you're too heavy there. This is one of those violent scenarios that just crashed right into support, but gave you no bounce opportunity to add. And really your first bounce is right there. Here is your violence right into support. This is support. You're dropping violently into support. You got to get into the violence, even if it's late and use the bounce as an adding opportunity. But again, 50% bounce. 50% don't, that's why you're getting in and not waiting for the bounce. I used to do that. I made that error decades ago. I corrected this decades ago, guys. If I didn't get into a violent bar early enough, I would simply let it go and wait for the bounce. Now look at where, look at how much I lose waiting for a bounce. And I began to do statistics on how many that I bypass that keep going on to make gains versus how many bounce to let me in. And I realize it's about half and half. And so you don't want to lose half of your money making possibility by waiting on the sidelines. That's why you have to get into the bar, even if it's late, because now it doesn't even look like you were late. You have trouble with this. What is your trouble with this? Like elaborate. What is, it is a troublesome bar, but it didn't violate a stop. So what is the trouble with it? Ah, uh, scared to add. Yes, I would have been reluctant to add here too. So don't feel so bad about that. It is one of your plays. It's a red bar takeout, but... This did a lot of damage. It almost took out the whole bullish move. So I, I'm okay with you missing that one. Did you let it run though? Cause you were scared of this, this? Oh, you got nicked out here. After the new, well, that, that's, I'm glad you told me that. That's a, that's a, that's a mistake, right? 
When do you do bar by bar, guys? When you what? When is bar by bar? When, when you break, so when you do this, right? So look, here's when you do that, right? Now you bar by bar. This thing is kind of dangling up there in outer space somewhere. You never do bar by bar in a grind unless your stock does that. Now it's bar by bar, right? So this is why what is the most superior stop item in a grind, in a power trend? What's the most superior? It's the only time it's superior, actually. The moving average. I hate moving average stops, except in this scenario. Now, see how un, how how the 20 is not relevant this is probably the eight right now you do realize that the only bar once you go moving average the only bar that matters is the big bar every other bar is like it doesn't even exist so you're ignoring everything except a really solid bar, a decent bar until you break. That is your choice. Um, do you use a one bar stop or a two bar stop? It's your choice. Determine which one is better for you. Do you get nicked out too many times if, and miss opportunity with a one bar? Then try a two bar for a while. Are you losing more gain than you need to by doing two bar instead of one? and try go back to one bar all right when you are trailing are you rich or are you poor you're rich so rich people have choices right well they have more choices than poor people for sure so you got a choice in that case do whatever you like is that second one uh, i mean it's okay i wouldn't do it this high off the low so I like to look at where did the move ignite from? That's a little too high, but I am getting really tight with my stop here because why do you see this? Do you see what this is? When that pause is the middle, you're probably near the end when yesterday's data still matters because some of you might recall that I'm fond of reminding you that yesterday's data is only relevant for a certain period of time and it's not a long time so when we're trading off of the open let's go over this for a second we're trading off of the open you've got the opening bar, and you've got yesterday's data here, yesterday's late day data. Now, we pay attention to this up until a point. So yesterday's data helps us determine what the fabulous four is. So we grab the 20 period moving average, we grab the 200, we grab the prior day's closing price, and we grab the high of the last 45 minutes or so and the last lower low. We take all of these markings and we take the top one and we draw a line across and we take the bottom one and we draw a line across. Now we're using yesterday's data. All of this comes from yesterday's data. Why? Because we don't have any data from today yet. And so yesterday's data is the only thing we can use. And we're using all of the prevalent things that yesterday's data tells us, the 20 to 200 where it stopped trading its last trading price and its last trading range of the day. But as the day progresses, it starts to produce enough of its own data to make this start to become 
not relevant. So the only reason why yesterday's data is relevant in the beginning is because we that's the only thing we have. Now, as the day progresses, yesterday's data becomes less and less important. So it's even cool how each bar moves a, another bar off the radar, off the radar, off the radar. So each bar is becoming less important as we grow the current day's data. So now this is not important, but this bottom is not important anymore. What's important is these bottoms now, this low, it's these lows now, because these lows are from today. I often get this, Oliver, how long is the Fabulous Four that we use off the open relevant? It's only relevant for the open. It loses its relevance as we start to build today's data. So it's very important to understand that. Yesterday's low, yesterday's high, yesterday's moving averages are important off the open, but they become less and less important. And today's data becomes more and more important as today's data grows. Now, this also leads to the fact that your 20 period moving average doesn't come fully into its own until later in the morning. Why? Because the 20 period moving average is actually at the open calculating yesterday's data. As today's data grows, an increasing portion of the 20 is reflecting today and a smaller portion of the 20 is reflecting yesterday. And so by the time you get 20 bars, your 20 period moving average is fully a 20 period moving average reflecting today. So the 20 period moving average actually grows in importance throughout the first part of the day. Its importance goes to being important, but not terribly important until later in the morning when it's fully reflecting today's activity and not yesterday's activity, which we can't trade yesterday's activity. You guys understand this point? The signals off the 20 are more powerful later than they are off the open. Now, that's not the case with the 200. The 200 stays important from the open because it's so long in terms of its time frame. It doesn't have that change in importance. It's basically always important. You know, it's the Titanic, right? You can't turn the 200 very, very quickly. So it just stays sturdy and doesn't lose its importance from the transition from one day to the other. I want to talk to you about something that many of you know, all right, and some of you who are relatively new may not know. It's this wedge kind of pattern that forms between the 20 period moving average and an overhead flat 200 period moving average. So here's our 200 period moving average. And this is normally flattish. It's never going to be perfectly flat, but for the most part, that's flat. What you have underneath it is that you have this rising 20 period moving average coming from a wide nature or wider. And this moving average is narrowing the width between the 20 and the 200. This, this scenario is your 200. This would be your rising 20 period moving average. When you have a stop gets trapped between the two, and it seems to just be almost like a ping pong ball. It might dip below a little bit, but snaps right back. The 20 period moving average, all right, this is actually not the picture of power, believe it or not. Matt, Matt is saying the picture of power. No, that's wrong. Not the picture of power. What normally happens in this scenario is that the 20 period moving average wins. So you've got the 200 as resistance. So the 200 is attempting to bat the stock back down. It's that last line of resistance, right? And the 200 will often be resistance. If the 200 can't make the stock break the 20, then it's telling you that the 20 is winning. And why is the 20 winning against the 200? because it's rising. So that every single time the 200 bats the stock back down, the 20 has gained ground coming, going from here 
to there. And every time that the 200 wax the stock back down, it wax it back down to a stronger, higher 20. And so the 20 keeps checking the drops, but from a higher position, from a stronger state. And it's telling you that because the 200 is stationary, but the 20 is not, the 20 is likely to overcome the 200. All right. Now, what I found is that the closer the stock breaks to the apex, the more powerful the move. If this move went, it would not statistically be as strong as this move, right? Which wound up giving you this. This would this would not be as strong because the breakout is still happening from a space. So the narrower that space, you guys know the concept of narrow and wide, the narrower, the more explosive, statistically, the move comes out of that. So you get right into this green bar as soon as it clears the high of a red bar. Okay, your entry is right there. Boom. So here's how this trade goes. Enter. Boom. Protection. Add. Boom. The rest is history. Now, let's count the feet, right? Let's count the feet. Okay. Uh, this add counts as a foot after the after this one so you've got this is this is foot one you've added on foot two elephant has elephant has three here's foot three and remember these little bars don't count here i would add these three these two green together here's foot four and yes sometimes you can get a foot five. Five is not a foot. It's more like the elephant sits down in the tub. So the elephant sometimes gets his first foot in the tub, puts his second foot in the tub, his third foot in the tub. Now he's got all feet in the tub. And sometimes he just says, I'm just going to take a bath. And he sits down in the tub. Now, once he sits down in the tub, the only next action is to get up. Once the elephant gets up, boom, then he steps one foot out of the tub, Boom, then another foot, boom, and then another foot, boom. Now he's back outside of the tub, and the, and the story repeats. Elephant in the tub, one, two, three, four, sit down. Elephant stands up, out, stands up, one, two, three, four, out, and repeat, repeat, repeat. Elephant in, one, two, three, four, sits down, boom. Elephant stands up, boom, gets out, one, two, three, four, out, repeat, repeat, repeat. All this game is, guys, is elephants getting in the tub, institutions getting in a stock, institutions coming out of a stock, elephants getting in the tub, elephants coming out of the tub. And it's based on this four, five step process. You see it here. I'm not even cherry picking this, guys. So let's go over the play again. Boom, two, stop, boom, two, all right? Now we've got foot one, foot two, foot three, foot four, foot five. You should be, you should be out. This is your first play. And look at when you're finished for the day. Really, boom. That's enough to make a living right there. 